In this video, we'll be going over another important concept in relation to users and permissions, and that's processes. A process in Linux is a running instance of a program. So like I already mentioned, the program is a file somewhere. If you execute that, Linux will start a process. There are a lot of processes running at any point. Many are started by the system when you boot the computer, and some are started under your username but also launched automatically. And then there's the processes that are started because you typed a command in the console. There's a program that can be used to display all the running processes at any point, and that's the top command. It's roughly equivalent to the task manager in Windows. But there are other ways of displaying that too. You can use the ps tree command to give you a short overview of the tree of processes. Processes may be launched as a sub-process of another one, and that goes back to something I said earlier, namely that each program is running within a shell and that might be running in another shell. So there's a hierarchy of processes and you can use PS3 to show that hierarchy. Each process has an owner similar to files and directories. In the case of processes, the owner by default is the person who launched the process. Each process can only do what its owner can do. For example, if there's a specific file that you don't have permission to access, then any process you launch can't access that file either. Each process that's running has a unique ID number in Linux, and that's called the PID or process ID. And you can always identify a process by that number. Let's take a look at the ps3 command. You can enter that as a normal user, and it will show you this tree view of processes. You can see there's one top level process that's called systemd. It's always called that in all modern Linux systems, on almost all of them. And it's basically the process that gets launched first and launches everything else. And then within that, a sub-process of that, you can see a number of automatic processes that are running. And at some point here, you can see this is my session where how I'm connected to the, the cluster. You can see within that session is running a shell, a bash shell in this case and within that is running the ps3 command. The top command is a little more complex. You can enter top, and you will see a view that looks kind of similar to the Windows Task Manager, if you've ever seen that. Um, there's a list of processes, and they're jumping around based on some ordering, and you can see things like how much memory is in use. So let's go over the output in detail. At the very top, there are things like the tasks, or in other words, the processes that are running at the moment, things like the CPU usage and the memory usage at the time. The columns at the bottom, the first one is the process ID. We've already talked about how each process has an individual number, the owner, and how many resources the process is using. In this case, the process at the very top is using one CPU, the 100% indicate that one core is used. On this cluster, there are 12 cores per node, and if it were using all 12, you'd be seeing 1200% here. That differs from Windows. In Windows, 100% means all cores, and in Linux, it's per core. Next is the runtime. You have to be a little careful, that's CPU seconds. So if a process was using two CPUs for 10 seconds, it would show 20 seconds. And finally, the command name, whichever process, uh, whichever command was used to launch the process. You navigate top with a number of single letter commands. The most important one is probably Q. That's uh, if you want to leave that top window view. There are a couple others where you can modify processes, especially you can kill a process with K. If you type K, it will prompt you to enter a process ID. And if you type enter, then uh, you will kill that process. In other words, it will stop. H will show you uh, a list of commands. They help. You can also filter processes. You can 
filter for example by the owner who launched them for example if i type you and then i'm typing my own username and you can see i'm uh, it's only lists processes that were launched by me if i type you again leave it empty enter that's all processes again by default if you enter a command and it launches a process then that process will run in the foreground in other words it will show on your console on your command prompt and you cannot do anything with that console while that program is running you can change that however you can launch a process in the background if you launch it in the background it's still running but you can also still use the console and, and launch other processes for example if a process launches a window that console will be stuck but you can launch it in the background and then you can still use that console and you do that by appending the ampersand sign to the command for example if i type sleep five minutes it will just do nothing for five minutes you can see the console the command prompt doesn't show up again Control c to stop it but if i now say sleep five minutes ampersand it's in the background i can still use the console you can also send processes that are already running to the background and bring them to the foreground again if you have a command running in the foreground that you want to send to the background you press ctrl z ctrl z will pause a process and then you type bg and that will send that process to the background if you want to bring it back to the foreground you can do that with with fg and then the job id careful the job id is not the process id each task that's running in the background will get assigned a job id one two three and so on and you can display this for all jobs that are running in the background currently with jobs for example the sleep command if i send it in the background with jobs i can display it and this is job one is a sleep command and if i say fg1 then that job is at the foreground again 